He was one of Portland's most prominent leaders, William Sargent Ladd. He served two terms as mayor and helped develop the city in the late 1800s. And over time, he would become involved in everything in Portland and in, in Oregon. Uh, manufacturing, uh, transportation, railroads, he invested in everything. Ladd also founded Portland's first bank. His entrepreneurial ventures garnered him a nice fortune. His net worth was estimated at between $150 and $250 million by today's standards. And while Ladd was admired for his philanthropy, he was also known as a shrewd businessman. If you did not pay your mortgage, then, then the bank would, would uh, foreclose. His reputation and his wealth made him a target even after his death in 1893. A man named Daniel Magone had a deep desire to capitalize on the Ladd family fortune. Magone, who had lost his property in the economic depression in the 1890s, had an ax to grind with the rich and powerful who controlled the city. He had also experienced the trauma of watching his young daughter drown. Some people again questioned, wondered whether he had, was losing his sanity uh, because he started to talk about uh, you know, plots to do things, to get his money back, uh, to find some way to get revenge on those who had taken his, his property away from him. Magone developed a plan to steal Ladd's body from his grave at the Riverview Cemetery and hold it for ransom. Came up with this plan to take Mr. Ladd's uh, corpse and to hold it for ransom for $50,000, to ask the family, the Ladd family, to pay $50,000 uh, to get his body back. But he couldn't do it alone, so Magone enlisted the help of three men. One was a ne'er-do-well named Charles Montgomery, who also wanted to get revenge on the wealthy elite. Magone told the other two helpers that they were stealing the body to donate to medical research, which of course was a lie. The cemetery had no guards, which made for an easy entrance and escape. But the men were paranoid they would be caught, so they stole a field telephone and tapped into the town's phone lines to monitor any calls about suspicious activity at the cemetery. They were convinced that the Ladd family had some sort of alarm at the, at the, at the gravesite that would go off. After digging late into the night, the body snatchers finally reached Ladd's coffin. They take the, what, what was described as a very well-embalmed, well-preserved Mr. Ladd from his coffin, and they take him with him, carry him uh, through the, the grass, through the trees, through the leaves, down to the river. There, they dug a hole and buried Ladd in a makeshift grave. The thieves escaped in a boat, and Magone crafted his ransom plans. Except there was one hitch, Magone and his men had made a huge mistake. The knife they had used to pry open the coffin had been accidentally left behind at the cemetery. The police arrive at the scene, find the knife. Uh, they go to the local blacksmith. Oh, I made that knife, he said. I made it for Daniel Mangone. He remembers who he made it for. So right away, the jig is up. Montgomery ratted out Magone instantly and led police to the shallow grave by the river. Magone was arrested and went on trial without ever achieving his goal of ransoming Ladd's body. Magone attempted to plead insanity, but the jury didn't buy it. He spent two years in prison for the grave robbery. And as for the Ladd family, they made sure no thief could ever steal their beloved again. Once they got the body back, they put it back in the casket, they put it in the ground, and they poured concrete around. His grave site now is uh, It'd be very tough to get into the casket.